and today we're going to be doing a cross match. Um, I lost all the plasma that I had for the patient that we did with the antibody screen and antibody identification panel. Um, so I ended up having to do a new patient. This patient is a positive. Um, you can see the agglutination in the A and there's, there are agglutinations in the D. They're very small, but you can see them right there. And so um, this patient is A positive. And as we know, um, uh, when we talk about compatibility uh, with blood, we know that when you try to get a unit to transfuse a patient, you want to first try to get the one um, that is closest to their blood type. So we would want to try to get an A positive unit um, then an A negative unit, and then uh, if we can't find any of those, then we could get an O unit. It could either be O positive or O negative. It doesn't matter because this person has um, a positive D. So uh, when you go to try to find a compatible unit, you want to go to your blood bank refrigerator and uh, get a segment from the unit. So this is our blood bank for our classroom, all right? And so since I know I want to get something um, that matches the patient, I wanna get an A positive patient. So here are the segments uh, for an A positive patient. So when you go to get segments from an actual unit, the unit looks like this, and the segments would have blood in there. like. This. like like those. Uh, a negative, um, an A negative patient right here, um, I picked an A positive. So just for the sake of matching my unit, um, I'll get an A negative. Let's see. Oh my goodness, they're all positive. Of course they are. Here we go. Okay, so this is an A negative patient, um, or sorry, not patient, donor, donor unit. So it would as it would be as if I took these segments off of this bag, and notice that there are serial numbers on the segments. So I'm going to take the segments out and look at them. So again, the only reason that I'm doing A negative right now is because it matches the, um, the fake unit that I have here. So when we do this, you label your tube first uh, for the compatibility, okay? So we're doing an A negative patient and you get one of these and this is a piercer um, I don't know if you can see down there, there's a little needle and it goes through to the other side and we put this in the top and we take the segment and we press it. Oh, I want to do this. Oh no! <laughs> I want to do this so you can see it. Okay, so we press it down on the, um, the piercing part and it makes it so that you can pull the blood down in there. So why would we actually do this? Why, why would we want to get the blood out of here? Well, when you do a compatibility testing, it's also called a cross match, uh, you're going to be using the cells from the donor unit and test it against the patient's plasma to see if there is a possible reaction. Um, because we know that we, we want something to be com compatible. If it's not compatible, then that means that the patient may have an adverse transfusion reaction and that would um, possibly kill someone. So we don't want that to happen. So we put that in the sharps container to throw it away. Okay, so I'm going to make my red cell suspension from these red cells, okay? so. I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come back. 
Okay, so I just did my red cell suspension from the segment. It's just like any other time that you do an RBC suspension. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one drop of the red cell suspension into the tube and now I'm going to take two drops of my patient plasma, put them in there and shake it up a little bit and put it in the serifuge to do my immediate spin. If a patient does not have a previous history of um, transfusion or pregnancy um, or whatever it is that your hospital policy actually follows, then you can just do the immediate spin cross match. If they do have a history of uh, multiple transfusions or multiple pregnancies, it's a good idea to do it all the way out to the AHG phase. Um, so today I'm just going to do the immediate spin. You all have seen uh, what all the other phases um, look like and how you do them. It's the same exact uh, kind of thing, um, the, in the uh, indirect antiglobulin testing that you do in order to find that out. Um, so I just got the patient out and we're reading our immediate spin cross match. And there is no reaction, okay? It's negative. So um, what I can then do is mark it on the patient paperwork that at immediate spin, this was negative. And um, I know that this is previously a different patient, um, but I'm just gonna use the paperwork for this. So the patient was A positive, the unit blood type that I picked was A negative because that's what my unit was. And um, I'm going to say uh, not performed for all of these because no history requiring the need to make it all the way out. Um, and therefore I would not need to do the check cells. So when I go to give uh, this unit to the nurse or clinician, whoever is coming down to get the unit for the patient, we would then do the patient distribution or the blood unit distribution paperwork as well. Um, so this unit will now be earmarked for this patient and uh, we will label it as such and um, put it back in the fridge and wait for the person to come and get it or deliver it uh, depending on what the hospital's policy is. Now for the patient that we did before that had the positive antibody, um, they were O positive. So if I had an O positive patient, A, would not be the correct unit to give them because there would uh, be a reaction um, because o, uh, P o people have A, anti-A and anti-B in their blood. So again, this is back to the patient that we had before that had the positive antibody. Um, so in that case, I would have done a cross match all the way out through AHG phase, okay? And I would find a unit that would say Kel negative. So with that being said, I would have gone and gotten an O positive patient, um, sorry, not patient, simulated, um, oh my gosh, uh, not a simulated unit, but a, um, a segment from a uh, blood unit, I would have done the um, cross matching all the way out through AHG, okay? So I would have done the IS, the 37, and the AHG phase. And <clears throat> hopefully they would, none of them would be reactive. And if there is no reaction, then you do the check cells and then 
there has to be a reaction with the check cells. Um, and then this unit that would have um, corresponded to this, um, we would have made sure it was Kel negative, okay? So this patient could receive this unit because it doesn't have the antigen that the patient had the antibody to in the screening and the um, antibody identification that we did before, okay? So if we were to fill this out correctly, we would take, take the, the stickers off of the back of the unit, put it on um, the paperwork, and put it on the blood distribution form that we have. And in that case, we would say that the patient was O positive, the blood unit we gave was O positive, and Kel negative. Our reaction, we would need to be negative here, negative at the 37, negative at the AHG, and um, positive at the check cells, okay? And then, then we would be able to distribute this, um, this unit, this Kel negative unit uh, to the patient. And we can do another video to talk about the blood unit distribution. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, sorry this was a little choppy today. I was very rushed and um, I'll try to make it sound better hopefully later. All right, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.